Hello everybody. Uh, my name is uh, Dr. Shahab Shabir and I am an assistant professor at the Maldives National University and uh, I welcome you all to this uh, talk upon a very important topic that's organ transplantation science science and the law before i begin i would like to express my profound gratitude to express foundation for orientation research and training and particularly to mustafa sir for providing me an opportunity to speak upon a very important and burning topic of this era this time and that is the organ transplantation so uh, dear friends uh, let's move to the serious job so i'll be talking about the science the scientific uh, point of uh, view about this organ transplantation how it is done and i'll uh, stick to the layman's language so that everybody uh, in my audience can understand then we'll talk about the indian scenario as well the importance why it is needed and then the religious attitude of towards this organ donation and transplantation as well as the law that is related to, related to it so first thing first let's see what is organ donation so it is the entire practice of uh, retrieving a human organ from a living or a deceased person who is referred to as a donor and transplanting it into a recipient who is in need this recipient will be a patient who is suffering from organ failure and who will not survive unless she or he receives an organ replacement the process of recovering organs is called as retrieval the organ donation includes this process includes the donation of organ as well as tissue as well so the tissue donation donation is also the process of retrieving or procuring tissues from a living or deceased person who is called as a donor and transplanted into, into a recipient medical science has made tremendous progress in recent times in the field of organ donation and transplantation with organ donation from one person capable of saving up to 9 lives and improving improving the lives of many others however uh, due to the prevalence of myth about organ donation and the lack of awareness about the topic particularly in asia and then in india a majority of people do not take up this noble cause for the benefit of others uh, now let's take a closer look at uh, which organs can be donated so the different organs that can be donated by a person after death or even while the person is still alive there are eight in numbers in general uh they are like kidneys okay and then liver then heart then lungs pancreas and intestine the liver which is uh sorry i'm talking about the kidney let's start but with the kidney which is uh an important body part and it can be donated by a deceased donor on average the lifespan of a transplanted kidney is around 9 years but it varies from individual to individual of all organs in the human body the demand for kidney is the highest and kidney uh, kidneys are the most frequently donated organs in the world a kidney disease most likely affects uh, both kidneys at the same time a living donor can easily donate one kidney to someone and function well for the rest of their lives then i talked about uh, liver so which is also another important organ with primary functions of bile production and excretion excretion of bilirubin cholesterol hormones and drugs and metabolism of fats proteins carbohydrates enzyme activation storage of glycogen vitamins and minerals synthesis of plasma proteins blood detoxification and purification the liver is the only organ in the human body that can grow cells and regenerate a donated liver from someone who has died can further be split into two pieces and transplanted into two different uh, people to save their lives a living donor can have a portion of his or her liver removed to donate to someone and the remaining portion will regenerate to almost its full previous size then comes the heart which is a muscular organ uh, which pumps blood through the human body in a person's life the heart will beat around 2.5 billion times on average and keep the blood running in the body after being retrieved from the donor a heart can survive for 4 to 6 hours only then comes lungs uh, which is single or double lung transplant can be performed from the deceased donors 
Additionally, living donors can donate a single lobe uh, from the lungs, though it will not uh, regenerate. Then comes pancreas. A deceased donor pancreas can be transplanted into an ailing patient. A living donor can also donate a portion of the pancreas and still retain pancreas functionality. Then last but not the least, in organs, it is intestine, which is after death, a donor can donate the intestine. Although it's quite rare, a living donor can donate a portion of the intestine in his lifetime, but uh, but it's very rare. In addition to organs, in addition to organs, rather, you can also donate tissues, uh, which can be like uh, corneas of the eyes, then skins, bones, then ligaments, then heart valves. This cornea donation, or generally it's called as eye donation, is the most common tissue donation after kidneys. The cornea is a transplant. Uh, sorry, it's a transparent covering over the eye. It is also the eye's primary uh, focusing element. Recipients who suffer from corneal blindness can gain their sight again after a corneal transplant. In our common layman's language, we call it eye donation. It's actually the corneal donation. So the patients, uh, those who may have been blinded by an accident, infection or disease, either the entire cornea can be transplanted or it can be transplanted in parts. A cornea transplant uh, is uh, that does not need any anti-rejection drugs in the recipient. So corneas from all ages of recipients are effective as long as the doctors, as they are healthy. Then comes the bones. Bones uh, from a deceased donors are used to replace bones of recipients whose bones are cancerous. Uh, a bone transplant can be done instead of amputating the cancerous arm. Then skin can also be donated. Uh, which can be used as grafting from, for burn victims, acid attack victims, or post mastectomy, uh, mastectomy or breast uh, reconstruction, amongst the other things. Then, a very new kind of uh, research has made it possible to donate your veins as well. And the donated veins are commonly used in surgeries for cardiac bypass. And apart from these, other tissues can also be donated, like uh, muscles, like tendons, ligaments cartilage and heart valves now accordingly the medical system what is the process of organ donation if we talk about so the process is simple the organ donation can be done from the living person that is called as a living donation process and then disease donation process which requires a different kind of medical uh, you know processes like uh, the living donation process requires the donor uh, to undergo some medical tests and evaluations to check and confirm that his or her medical compatibility with the recipient is there then the living donor's medical compatibility is confirmed by a doctor only after all the tests have positively confirmed that the donor is compatible with the recipients the transplant can take place then the living donor's organs are retrieved surgically by the doctors they'll be stored in special chemical solutions briefly until they are transplanted into the recipient then the living donor will need to remain under medical care for a few days as required by the medical process about the disease donation process, uh, disease donor is often someone who has suffered a fatal injury to the head or had brain hemorrhage. He or she is declared brain, de brain stem dead by a group of medical experts in a hospital. Then the donor's family has to give consent for the donation before the process of organ retrieval can be carried out. Meanwhile, the donor is kept on life support uh, with the doctors looking after all his or her needs until the retrieval of organs is allowed to move forward. Then suitable recipients for all the organs are identified from a waiting list. They are notified and asked to reach their respective hospitals. After retrieval, the body of the donor is respectfully handed over to the family. Uh, so about organ donation and transplantation, this is something it's, uh, people think that it's a new concept, but let me tell you that it's, it's not a new concept. The process of organ transplantation or you can say donation you know it has been there in the pages of history as well so it is believed that with the recorded history available it is believed that in AD 300 it was the first time that uh, you know Comos and Damien the two brothers they got the first organ transplantation you know, the leg of uh, sacristan Deacon Justinian was amputated to treat a cancerous lesion. The leg of uh, another uh, gladiator was retrieved and it was given to two brothers, Cosmos 
and Damien. So it's like in around 380 it happened. Then in 1668, the first successful bone graft happened. It was documented by Job uh, van Miniren. Uh, like uh, he was a Dutch surgeon and he became the surgeon in Amsterdam in 1635. He showed a great interest in hand surgery and interesting is a demonstration of flexor tendon repairs on corpuses by one of his people, his student, right? He wrote a book which gives a good representation of the state of the art of surgery in the 7th century in Amsterdam. It's up there is a book that is written by him. It is in, in Dutch. That is the language of Netherlands. And this uh, book uh, talks, talks or uh, tells in detail about the bone graft. Then first successful human-to-human -human bone transplant, it uh, happened in 1878. Uh, then it was the operation in which bone used from a cadaver remained unusual because there was no way to process and preserve human tissue, so it was transplanted. Then 1905, that is in 1905, uh, 9th uh, August 1905, the first successful cornea transplant by Dr. Eduard Zirm was, um, you know, done. And the Zirm actually first met blinded in both eyes called as Gloger. At the same time, a boy was brought to his clinic after an accident that left metal, metal pieces in his eyes. The attempt to save boy's eyes were unsuccessful. Zirm and you can, uh, in, in a in them, I mean, taken them and saved the corneas for transplantation into Glogger's eyes. Although complications affected one eye, but it was believed to be the first cornea transplant done by Otto Zirm. Then, in December 1954, first kidney transplantation was done. A pioneer medical team that also received the Emory prize of 1961 that is of the american academy of arts and science because they brought the first process ever of kidney transplantation to the world the pioneer medical team included dr harrison joseph a murray and dr john p merrill it is significant to know that uh, dr mr murray shared the nobel prize in physiology of medicine in 1990 in 1971 dr harrison received the Purkinje medical a medal from Czechoslovakia. At that time, it was one country, you know, it's Czech and Slovak. In May 1983, he was awarded the Case Medal from the American Association. Then in 1966, the first pancreas transplantation by Richard uh, Lilyhai and William Kelly of Manchester, USA, was done. Like uh, pancreas along with kidney and duodenum was transplanted into a 20 years, 8 years old woman and her blood sugar level decreased immediately after the transplantation but eventually she died 3 months later from pulmonary embolism. In 1979 the first living related partial pancreas transplantation was done. Then a few more I um, mean historical events uh, regarding organ transplantation that was done like in 1937 the first artificial heart was created in 1946 the first heterotropic heart transplantation was done 1946 was the same year the first transfer of complex heart lung was done in 47 that is 1947 the first isolated lung transplantation happened then in 1948 the first liver transplantation happened in 1951. The world's first orthotopic heart transplant without the use of cardiopulmonary bypass was done in 1952. The world's first mammarino coronary bypass surgery was done. Then 1954, first transplant second head dog was done. And uh, this was done by a person. His name was Vladimir Petrovich Demikov. He was a Russian doctor and most of these uh, operations and transplantations were done by him then in 1967 the world's first successful human to human heart transplantation was done it was done by christian neethling barnard he was a south african cardiac surgeon who performed this heart transplantation and then following the first successful kidney transplant in 1953 in the U.S., Barnard performed the first kidney transplantation in South Africa in October 1967. Then in 1979, the first successful live donor partial pancreas transplantation was done by Dr. David E. Sutherland. India 
uh, also had been a champion and in 2005 the first successful ovarian transplantation was done by Dr. P. N. Mahathre of Wadia Hospital in Mumbai. Then more researches were done in the area of medical, uh, you know, uh, in the in the medical area, I would say, and then uh, more uh, researches in medical in, uh, transplantation of organs were done, and the first successful transplantation of face, surprisingly, like 80% of face transplantation was done in 2008. Uh, that was done by Maria Siminov of Cleveland, USA. Then uh, let's uh, uh, talk about the science of transplantation. That what are the what is the medical process like? How medical see it, medical uh, system, medical science. So the types of transplantation that is, uh, uh, you know, pr approved by the medical science is called as like autograft, then allograft or allotransplantation, then isograft, then xenograft and xenotransplantation, then split transplantation, domino transplantation, and all. In brief, I'll talk about all these processes and then we'll go to other facts. Like autotransplantation is uh, the transplantation of a tissue to the same person. Sometimes this is done with surplus tissue or tissue that can regenerate or tissues more desperately needed elsewhere, for example, skin graft or vein extraction of CABG, etc. Then sometimes an autograft is done to remove the tissue and then treat it to the person before returning it. <clears throat> Uh, then uh, what is allograft uh, as per medical science it's, it's a transplantation of one organ or an organ or a tissue between two genetically non-identical members of the same species most human tissues and organ transplantations are generally allograft in medical terminology due to the genetic the genetic difference between the organs and the recipients, the recipient's immune system will identify the organ as foreign and attempt to destroy it, causing transplantation rejection. So the risk of transplantation rejection can be estimated by measuring the panel reactive antibody level. Then there's another process called as isograft, which is a subset of allograft in which organs or tissues are transplanted from a donor to a genetically identical recipient, uh, such as an identical twin. Then isografts are differentiated from other types of transplants because while they are anatomically identical to allografts, they do not trigger an immune response. Then another very important and very, you can say, um, innovative area in the medical science is called as xenograft and xenotransplantation, which is a transplantation of organ tissues from one species to another. Uh, an example is like porcine heart valve transplantation, which is quite common and successful. Uh, then another example is like from fish to non-human primate, uh, it's called as piscine primate transplant of, of tissues. Uh, say, for instance, like uh, in layman's language, if I'm speaking, if I'm telling you, it's like taking heart from a monkey, giving it to a human being, likewise like that, right? It's called as xenotransplantation. In general language, it's like taking organs <coughs> from one species to another, from animals and giving it to the humans. Uh, you know, this will actually help people who are waiting for the organ transplantation things to be done. Now let's see about the statistics of organ transplantation and the importance. Uh, four lakh people die every year in India waiting for an organ to be transplanted to them. At every 10,000 needy people, there's just one donor available in India. That's why there's a high requirement of organ organs actually and the transplantation is a very important process to be done in the medical area today. Like uh, there is a data from USA, it says that uh, two thirds of the individuals waiting for an organ transplantation in 2011 were 50 years old or older. That year alone, 2,242 deceased donors were between 50 to 64 years of age. 595 deceased donors were 65 or older. In 2011, 17,089 of the 28,535 or 59% of the people transplanted were 50 above. Then uh, look at this uh, economic status of the donor. Uh, the top 10 countries, it's like USA, UK, France, Germany, Japan, Netherlands, Sweden, Canada, Spain, and Italy. Mostly European nations are in need and they've got good money as well, but they're not getting organs. So with this, it can be estimated that this uh, market of organ donation or the organ market is a booming market. 
and this booming market actually attracts the mafia and the wrongful people into its fold so you we cannot deny the the you know process or you cannot deny the existence of organ trafficking and it's happening actually a lot of countries have reported there are some hidden reports some conspiracy theories as well and it actually says that the organ the illegal organ tra trafficking market is booming on a higher scale dear friends that's all for part 1 rest i'll discuss in the second part make sure to tune in take care till we meet next goodbye jai hind